Hello everyone, and welcome to the third leg of the Tour to Tour series. So today we are going to be flying from St. John's in Canada, so Charlie Yankee Yankee Tango, to Chicago O'Hare in the US, which is Kilo Oscar Romeo Delta. We are in the Tolis A321. Now I haven't done a review on this because it's basically the same aircraft as the A319, but we'll, we'll have a look over it as we go through it. So I'm going to basically get this guy started in exactly the same way that I would any other plane. Um, I have also got FT Sims sound pack on here. So hopefully this is going to be nice when you hear this. Okay, so yeah, the same sort of thing as the A319 that I have to dial all the screens up. Not, uh, I really don't know what that's about. The Aerosoft A320 family in FSX, the screens were all black. So you did have to turn them up. But here, they're just, they're dim. I don't really know why. So, radio's on. Let's get the IRS aligned. So, oops, nav. And IR2. And IR3. We'll also put this guy onto system one. Nice, so that's everything on. Set the evacuation to captain and purser. We will not put the seatbelts on yet, but we'll put the no smoking signs, arm the emergencies, and I think we won't put the APU on yet actually because we don't have any fuel on board. So, so as you can see, it does look really, really nice. Uh, now, I do, of course, as always, have ASXP available. I can see we've got wind shear here again today. Wind, 270 at 15 knots, gusting to 22. It's going to be fun. Visibility greater than 10 nautical miles. Clouds scattered at 2,500 feet. Temperature 14, dew point 12. No reported precipitation. Altimeter 1006. Oops, you daisy. And dial this guy around as well. There we go. Okay, so let's, while the IR is in a line, we can get everyone loaded. I have a flight plan from Simbreath. Simbreath? Simbreath. Block fuel should be 17,800, which is a lot. Oh, interesting. I can now fit more fuel in. So 17,800. Uh, I know why I can fit more fuel in because. Ah, right, now this is interesting then. So let's come here. Fuel tanks, we've got two here. If I change this to one, now our fuel has a maximum of 2859. And I think with the CFMs, it has more as well. No, same amount. But yeah, so basically, I can put two center tanks in. Uh, we don't need it for this anyway, but this is a long haul plane, so we'll probably leave them in. And I'm going to leave the IAEs on. Okay. So anyway, 17,800 of fuel. So that's loaded. Now, what have we got for passengers? 222. Okay, and cargo, only 200 of cargo. So, where should we put this? Here should be fine. So that gives us a zero fuel weight of... 70,176. Okay, let's 
get the FMC set up. So initialization. We do have an XP plan. CYYT to KORD. Flight number today. This is a made up flight. We're in what colours, but this is a completely made up flight. 9997. Cost index 15. Uh, cruising flight is going to be 34,000 with an expected cruise temperature of. I'm just looking and say minus 50 is the average. It will be warming up as we get closer to KORD. So we hit the align IRS. Now, zero fuel weight, so we've said 70.2 slash 28.2. Block fuel, 17.8. Okay. Taxi time, I'm not sure how long it's going to be. We'll put it to 0 0.4. There we go. Okay, so flight plan. Let's uh, close this guy down. We will be departing from runway 29. And there's only one uh, SID, so we'll use that. And then destination arrival will be runway 22 left. Uh, what I haven't done is decided which one. Yes, okay, so ILS runway 22 left. Uh, the star will be wind echo 1. This one here. No veer and no transition. Okay. Now we've got a flight plan discontinuity right at the beginning. Which is interesting because I also can't get rid of it. Uh, we have to wait for the IR to align to check it completely. But let's check the rest of the plan. So there's another one down here. See, it won't let me delete either of them. Interesting. Ah, maybe because I need to delete the manual instead. And now, maybe I can delete the flight plan discontinuity. I can, okay. So we can do the same up here then. If we delete the manual stage, then we can delete the flight plan discontinuity. Perfect. So we now have a complete flight plan. Perfect. So, performance page. Now that we have everything plugged in, if we go back to the ISCS, um, let me have a look. Does the departure runway have a slope? So, runway 29 is this one. It does have a slope, a very slight one. Now, can I find the actual slope value? That would be useful. Um, no, <laughs> it doesn't fancy giving it to me. So I can see there is a slight slope, but it's not, it's nothing major. It's strange that I can't find it on the flight plan though. Very odd. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll set it to one to be conservative. Uh, take off flaps one because this runway is eight and a half thousand feet long. That's plenty. Flight plan is the active. Uh, can't use flex, so we need to be on full thrust anyway. Right. So. One six four. One six seven. And one seven zero. 
Transition altitude I'll check. So flaps are one and we need to be down 0 0.1. No flex temp no flex takeoff temperature. And if I check here Transition altitude is 18,000 indeed, and it will be the same at destination, it will be 18,000. Okay, so we are set up to go, which means we can now, we've got all the fuel on board, put the seatbelt signs on. Now if we go back into TOLIS, we can now close all the doors. go and we can turn on the APU so we'll wait for the flap open sign there we go now I have to say this is <coughs> pretty much what I expect from TOLUS. This is a very nice model. Everything appears to be working well. Don't see any issues with it. I like it. But like I said, I don't think that it's very difficult for TOLUS to do a bad plane after the A319. If they did, I would not be very impressed. Um, IR is now aligned, cool. Clear those messages off. So we've got the performance here, we've got the flight plan here. Very, very good. So we want runway 29, which is here. So we should push back tail to the left so that we can go down here. So let's set up better pushback. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. Okay. Now, something that I should do, which I forgot, is I should load up uh, my voice attack. There we go. So we get this loaded. Right, I think we are now ready to go. The APU is on. Just need to put the APU bleed on and check that the generator has everything it needs. So bleed is coming from the APU. Good. Uh, where do I look? Electricity. There we go. Electricity, APU generator is there. So let's switch off external power. Okay. So, let's just uh, disconnect the external power. We are now good to go, I think. Uh, yeah, random faults are off. Good. Don't want those. Not when I'm doing this. Don't mind random faults when I'm flying in general, but not today. So, what do I need to do? I need to request tug. Request tug. He doesn't appear to be listening to me. Request tug. Okay, that's a little bit odd. I think I'm going to have to go and restart voice attack. Ah, oh, voice attack. Bless you. Let's try it this way. Okay. Request tug. Okay, we're having to give up on um, voice attack today. I'm going to have to 
work that out afterwards, so we'll request the tug ourselves manually. Ground and cockpit, tow is driving up. Right, we're on arc, I'm going to go to 10. I don't think there are any constraints, but we're going to check anyway. What is our initial altitude? We don't have one, so we're going to go straight to 34,000 feet. This guy into nav with airports showing on a 40 mile radius. Okay, so let's just wait for this guy to get connected. He is here waiting for us. And today's flight is actually a very long one. Uh, according to the flight plan, should be. Where's the flying time? I did see it before. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Flight time is just over four hours. So. I do love watching this. It's very cool. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. Okay. Parking brake released. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Okay, so beacon on. Ignition start. Fuel pumps on and engine one. I'm trying to zoom in so that you guys can see it. Hopefully you can see that well enough. You can hear the dog barking in the back a little. You hear it more when I put engine 2 on in a moment. Okay, engine 1 is available, so engine 2 coming on. There wasn't much PTU noise then, actually. Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. So that's the parking brakes on. Disconnecting tail. Stand by. And that engine is almost finished getting ready. I'm going to set the chrono going. And I'll set the other chrono going once we take off, so we can record flight time. Right, that's now available as well, so let's just do a quick check. Yes, we can disconnect. Vertical speed, uh, vert yep, that's sorting itself out. Bleed, we have bleed from the engines. Electricity, generator 1 and 2 have taken over. Hydraulic power, good. Fuel pumps all on. Conditioning. It's a little bit warm, but the temperature should come down now. Tail is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. Okay. Uh, wheel temperature's okay. Pitch trim. We need to set this to 0 0.1 down. There we go. Right. I think everything is good. So let's turn the ignition off. We can now, of course. Turn the APU bleed off, and the APU, we will put the runway turn off lights on.
and the nose wheels have just gone to taxi. Now, I will just be back in a moment. A street cleaning truck went past, so it was hella noisy out there. Right, are we ready to go? I think we are. But we should put TCAS on. Let's just move over here so we can see things a bit better. Uh, what's the date today? 21st, so it stays on an even number, uh, odd number. Uh, we go to above and round to TARA. Nice, we're ready. So, let's get AVS up. Now, where do we say we need to go? We're going to go round here and do that last one. Then here, then here, then we'll come around here, and yeah, I guess to there. So we can see where we're now going. Let's uh, get rock and rolling. So parking brake is off. Let's apply a little bit of thrust. Shouldn't need much. The A321, like its younger brothers, smaller brothers, doesn't actually need much power. Not to taxi anyway. It can taxi on ID. It can taxi on idle power. Uh, getting all sorts of words mixed up now. Okay, let's set the flaps to one. We will do a cabin check. Because we're entering the runway, we will put the landing lights and the strobes on, even though we are actually going to turn off the runway straight away. Uh, I can also see that we've gained far too much speed here. This is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, Ever single aisle aircraft are. In, they don't require much power to taxi. Okay, so as we're off the runway now, let's turn those off. I'm just going to taxi around here. I think this is the cargo area, or possibly the GA area. Right, spoilers need to be armed. We can do that now. And auto brakes to max. I take off config. Okay, we're all good. And here we are, taxiing. Like I said, very, very nice plane. I have wanted the 321 for ages, but I kind of held off on it because I didn't need it. But I miss it, to be honest, because the, the Flight Factor A320 is still not performing as I would like and I wanted something bigger than the A319 so it was kind of a requirement for me to have this I really i have been missing bigger planes bigger single aisle planes anyway exciting news though that uh, Tolis are doing a Neo and an A340 both of those are very cool So. 
and we need to go down here because we need the full length of runway as we already know from having been told we couldn't use flex temp we have to use toga so now we'll do a full turn just double check we're not smashing into anything this is full turn for me and full power to the rudder, rudder. I think is probably going to have affected our wheel temperatures. Yeah, they are warm. You know, they're not too bad. Okay, we'll just get into position and then we will take off. So, we are good to go. Let's go dial him up and full throttle oh that's a nice engine noise, I like that Positive rate, gear up. I'm currently following the flight director as we go. Wow, look at that wind. Screenshot, sorry. And we need to lower the throttle to climb thrust. I cannot wait until I get my Airbus stick. It will be here soon. Oh, I keep nudging the thing. There we go. Yeah, not long now until it arrives. Come on. Continuing on our climb, this is a good rate. Is it auto retracting? Oh my goodness, that is incredible. I've never had that on a single Airbus aircraft. No, it's not. It's brought the flaps in. Oh, interesting. The good news about my new stick is also that, uh, of course, it shouldn't be as squeaky, which is good, because I know the squeaking is annoying. It's annoying for me. Now this is just default, because this is, I, I have X Europe, but it obviously doesn't apply anything over here, I don't think. It would make perfect sense for it to not apply anything. Right, let's put the autopilot on there. Clearly we are quite heavy today because, um, yeah, he is, we're not climbing very quickly. So we must be rather heavy.
trying to get some screenshots. Oops. This is the only problem with head shake. I do like that function with the rolling, but maybe I should turn it off. Right, ground spoilers are still armed, so let's disarm those guys. Now we can load the progress page. Uh, in fact, we'll load this page. So we've got... Oh, I forgot to put the chrono on. Okay, we've got this one, which is close. Uh, yeah, so we've got UTC 2259. The descent. Ah, because the UTC is here. Yes, of course, this is Zulu time that I was flying in. I was wondering what on earth was going on. So 22.59, that is 3 hours and 13... 3 hours and 23 minutes. Just under 1,500 nautical miles. We are about to hit the 10,000 mark. So I'm going to dial this up. Now then, is this system working? Put into water. Let's see what it does. So we're past 10,000 feet. Get those lights off. I can turn the seatbelt signs off as well. Give the guys a little bit of uh, room to breathe. I can see it's a bit warm. Let's dial these both down. Go to the conditioning tab. Yeah, it's a little bit warm. currently trying to build speed up, which is why we're not climbing very quickly at all. And I can see we've still got a fairly long way to go. Hmm. It hasn't auto-picked any VORs. Right, cockpit and uh, cabin are now cooling down, which is good. And we are approaching our initial cruise speed, which means everything will start speeding up. Uh, proximity warning system, put it to water. And what if I put this guy to manual? Does it do anything? No, so again. There's still no functional weather radar. That does disappoint me. I would really like that to be a functional weather radar. Well, I suppose at least I have um, active sky so I can see what's going on. Cruising out over these big old lakes in Canada. I don't know if it's a lake or a sea, it's a class. I guess these ones here below us are lakes. But anyway, I will continue. I'll try and get some sort of screen grabs or video, video segments during the flight. But this is going to be a long old flight, so, yeah, you know, we're going to be running for quite a long time. So I will see you. Uh, near top of descent.
Okay, ladies and gents, we are now eight nautical miles from top of descent. We are currently out over Lake Michigan. So we are not very far now at all. I can show you on the map. There is obviously a lot of traffic around here. That must be, there it is, KORD. That place with all that crazy amount of traffic. Let's turn off the parked traffic. So what is that? Lagrange Memi Hospital. What, what on earth is all of these things parked down here? Oh no, that's still KORD. I think. Yeah. Just when you zoom out, it can't, it doesn't have enough room to put everything in. Okay, so. What do we say? Two nautical miles. Let's have a quick check. What do we need to put in as our descent point? 2,500. Push the button, then we can adjust it. There we go. So we're now in descent mode, and if we come here, we can keep an eye on our vertical deviation, which we're currently a little bit high. But I think we'll be able to catch up with it. The engines are still dialing all the way back. They're going down to complete idle. That way we can try and, you know, get ourselves down as quickly as possible, which is good. You can see the vertical deviation. We're catching up a bit. Once we do catch up a bit, we should be able to actually slow down the rate of descent, which will help with the speed, because that speed is... Uh, very close to the upper limit. Very, very close. But you can see the green dot here, which is our target altitude. And of course, the lower we get, the higher this band gets. I don't remember if it changes exactly at 30,000. I think it's, it's already creeping at the moment by the looks of it. now, so it's just going to keep creeping up. But basically, the lower we get, the higher the indicated airspeed can get, because the Mach number is lower. <coughs> so, in the exact same conditions, the Mach number is based on the speed of sound, and therefore it's based on the density of the air. So, the higher up you go, you keep the same Mach number, but that gives you an lower indicated airspeed, which is why you can see our Mach number is not changing by very much, but our indicated airspeed is creeping up, and it's still within the limits just about. And we are about to catch up with our vertical descent profile, deviation is about to turn back to zero. We can see on here exactly where we should be going. don't see any constraints apart from just before final. So I will just double check what the ILS details are. So, yep, 2,500, okay, that's fine. Um, decision height is going to be 200 because we do need to program this stuff in. So, decision height will be 200. QNH, I will check that now. QNH, 10.14. Temperature, 19. Wind, 230 at 5. 19. 230 at 5 knots. Transition altitude is correct. We will do a full flap landing, that is correct as well. So, that is that setup. And you can see the red ribbon, the tape, has now risen all the way up past 340. And that, ladies and gentlemen, down there, turn these screens off and go outside, is Chicago O'Hare. 
Now I have the uh, Nimbus, I can't remember the full name of the developer, but Nimbus KORD. It wasn't working 100% correctly, the AutoGate plugin wasn't working in uh, the beta, the uh, uh, Xpen 11.5 betas. It may now be working because we've gone to RC1, which is the release. I think it stands for a release candidate, doesn't it? <coughs> but we're now we're spot on target. As you can see, our runway is actually the one just out there to the left. That's that's where we'll be landing. But we're going to go and swing all the way around here and back out, back in again. That's good because it gives us plenty of time to descend. So I think we will just uh, we'll continue for now. Uh, what I'll do. I'm going to make a mess if I try doing this while we're turning. I'll wait until we've stopped the turn. That'll be better. So I'm just going to go set up a wing view quickly. As this is the first time I've flown the plane, I don't have any views set up. So I will go and grab a wing view. And then we can just uh, have a look outside while we're descending. Then we'll go for a trailing edge wing view. Oh, that's, that's a nice wing view. There we go. Of course, wing views are not the best in the world anyway. Hide that. Set this one. There we go. And we can go back here. So, as we pass transition altitude, we will, of course, reset ourselves to. Ah, uh, we've already done. So, 10 14. Okay. And now, yeah, let's have a look at the wing view while we just continue on down. Right, we are approaching 10,000, aircraft is currently just slowing down, so now is a good time to put the landing lights on and the seatbelt signs. Because we're going to cross 10,000 in a moment, so it would be good to do it now. And we are still spot on with our expected altitude, so that's good. And our speed has now got into the correct zone. Very good. So we'll start descending again. And if we go here we to our perf page, we've got our flap speeds. So two two six, two one one, one five seven. 
a landing speed of 144. Final approach speed is 149. Okay. So we now need to turn back the other way. I know, it's a little bit weird, isn't it? So now we can actually see something out of this wing view. We are currently, I can tell you, for anyone watching who knows the area, we have currently over the top of Barrington, heading towards Inverness and Schaumburg. Schaumburg? Schaumburg? Schwaumburg, I don't know. Oh no, we're going to turn before we get to Schwaumburg, actually. So we're going to pass over the top of Pal Palatine and Prospect Heights before we turn uh, final for the runway. So yeah, not long left now. Not long at all. I think we could use some lights. Um, Turn these guys up. I think there should be floodlight control panels here for these ones. Yeah, that looks a bit better now. A bit more room. You can see things better. I'm going to switch the landing system on now. It went too early to catch the localizer, so I, I don't want to. Try, I don't want to mess things up by trying to do that now. Our deceleration point is still. A fair bit away. We've got time before we decelerate. So it's, now it's just a case of chilling out, really, and waiting for the plane to descend. You can see we've got a point up ahead, 4,000 below, which is the first part of the uh, approach, and then we've got the second one, which is two and a half thousand feet below, which is where we will pick up the glide slope. So I'll put the localizer on as we come around this bend and the glide slope and the approach uh, arm the approach as well. So now maybe it would be a good time just to double check just to double check that the aircraft has the right settings in the radio. ILS frequency 110.1 ILQQ correct course. 226, I've got 225 lifted, lift, listed, but I assume the plane knows what it's doing. It's probably just a slight difference between Navigraph and X-Plane. So, yeah, we're really not far now. But what I would like to do is not start is uh, start the descent a little, the um, activate the approach phase a little bit earlier because at flaps two we can we can descend at a decent speed. What is that down there? Power cables or wind? Can't really tell. Oh, like a power station. That's cool. I don't know where the, all this autogen is coming from. Maybe it is um, X, X Europe, but I'd be surprised if it was. Right, flaps to one. Still on green dot at the moment, which is good. I'm going to put this guy down to 10 now. speed brake back in and arm it ready for our approach. So we're still on green dot, speed is decreasing still.
currently below the ILS approach, but that's fine, we knew that was going to happen. And so we are now on track. I guess that's Chicago over there, the actual city. Oh, that looks cool. Let me pause a moment. That might be a nice screen grab. I can get the angle right. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> now that I've finished messing around with screenshots. So where's the airport? I've lost it now. It's so low I can barely see it. Over there. So I can see our runway. Right, flaps to three. Gear down. I should have turned that to below earlier. Oops. Three green. So, flaps to full. Localizer armed. approach as well. So, localizer captured, glide slope captured. And we're now descending again. Cool. So, we should get our blue memo come up in a minute for landing and we will check that everything is good at the moment spot on there we go everything so landing gear down check signs on check cabin check spoilers on check flaps full so we are almost down Four miles to go. We've got two red and two white. And everything is looking pretty good at the moment. Still stable. So, I will now take control. Okay, my aircraft. One I'm just doing some slight adjustments. Still two white, two red, I can see them up ahead. Just point the nose down a little bit more. This is why it's always good to leave auto throttle on. Because now I still the engines are changing speed as I change pitch. Oh, and there's someone taking off just as I'm about to land. Excellent. Fire. 
versus versus green full reverse thrust just put ourselves back onto the center line a little and we're going to need some brake as well Reverse idle. And that's the reverse is stowed. Okay, so I think that was a slightly heavier than usual landing. But it wasn't bad. myself slightly. <laughs> don't normally do landings that good. Right, I'm going to leave the landing lights and strobes on for now because we're about to pass over some runways. But put the APU on and the nose lights and we'll put the runway turn lights on as well. Now where do we need to go? We need to head to, you know, let's go here, KORD. Turn off the custom, put it back onto default. So where do we need to go? So if we follow Taxiway Yankee all the way up, all the way up here, and cross over runway 10, 1028, and we can turn left by there, so we'll put that in. I don't know, we'll pick somewhere once we get to that location. So we're, yeah, we're just heading straight up for now, which means, let's get the flaps up, and actually we're not going to be crossing any runways just yet, so let's turn that off. We'll start the APU, and I think we can do this from an outside view. So let's just quickly get over and park ourselves up. So we need to find somewhere to park then. Uh, that looks like it's an available spot there, so I think we'll go for that one. Looks good enough for what we need. So back inside. I do like the challenge of trying to park these guys correctly. I usually make a right mess of it, but uh, we'll try anyway. Uh-oh. Where's he going? Please turn. Please turn. 
Please turn. Please turn. Away from me. Okay, good. Uh, he is kind of turning away from me. He stopped. I think he's worried that I'm going to be in the way. Let's put a bit of extra power in. Which is not true. We're not in his way at all. He could have turned down there without any problems. I guess there's a one-way system around here that I have not checked. What is that anyway? 737? An E75? What is an E75? Turn the nose lights off as we turn in so that we don't blind anyone. And then let's do the worst parking in the entire world. Wow. If we can at least stop. There we go. We can. So we're going to do something a little silly. There we go, that's the first reverses out. Definitely not the way to use a plane. They're not designed to work like this. Oh, did we just pull a wheelie? <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, again, not how planes are meant to work. But at least now we can try and get semi straight. So we've got this dude over here telling us to turn in. I'm trying, mate, I promise, I'm trying. Okay. Parking brakes. Where have they gone? How have I lost them? There they are. Parking brakes on. <sighs> How do we do? Pretty freaking awful. Now, can we attach this guy? Let's see. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. No, I don't know if that's because of my shocking parking or because it just doesn't attach. Right. Let's go in here and get the engines shut down. Turn off this. In case you couldn't see what that was, I was turning off the transponder. That's the engines off. Brakes are warm, shall we say. I think we could do with some brake fans. And we can now turn off the beacon lights. So, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We are now here in Chicago, so we're going to be doing leg four very soon. But for now, thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, I will see you again very soon for the next leg. Goodbye.